fact is we need 6,800 more units today just to catch up and bring our housing stock to a healthy level. Elected and community leaders are addressing the housing crisis in Vermont. Governor Phil Scott announcing a new round of community development block grants to fund affordable housing and other projects. This round of funding will bring over $2 million to projects across the state. Without it, many, many projects would, wouldn't have the financial resources to get started at all. Through the program, Housing units in Rutland and Castleton will be renovated and redeveloped, bringing more affordable homes online, which we desperately need to keep and attract more workers. The governor met with local leaders at a vacant building on Park Street in Rutland, where some of the grant money will be used to turn it into affordable housing. Rutland County Housing Trust Executive Director Mary Cohen says they are hoping to begin the project in 2025 and expect it to be available in 2026. We have three projects in our pipeline right now. One is fully funded and has broken ground in West Rutland. This is a second one and a third one on Forest Street in Rutland City. And that totally it will bring about 80 units to the community in the next 24 months. That is super exciting. In total, the Housing Trust has received a roughly $500,000 block grant to fund its projects. Rutland City Mayor Mike Dungis says affordable housing is essential for the community and that the grants will help, but building efforts will still require patience. There's a lot of standards that have to be met, and that's great. That means that we're pro providing good quality housing at an affordable rate. But in order for that to happen, government participation in the form of grant money and funding is always a great way to kickstart projects and get them moving. The block grants are also funding housing projects in Castleton and Underhill. Other communities are getting grants to fund infrastructure improvements and services to residents. In Rutland, James Maloney, NBC5 News.